What's up, people? I hold shift here, and uh, we're doing something a little different than the normal Realm Royale content we've had. Let's jump back into the one true love. Baby, come back. <laughs> Paladins, Koga, the newest champion in the Realm, and my goodness, from a competitive standpoint, just taking a look at him. Wow, does he look like a lot of fun. One of the more high skill capped, uh, I'd say, champions of the game at the moment. Just by sheer look. The fact that you have a resource meter that you have to manage two different stances. Knowing when you can all commit versus when you have to back out. There's a lot going on with Koga and I'm really excited to see it. So let's take a look at his abilities. Of course, he's got the two submachine guns to start things off. He can always switch that over in his dragon stance to the Hellkite Claws. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But he started off with the submachine guns. 40 damage every 0.06 seconds. Obviously, very, very fast. It's good chip. It's good consistent damage. Cauterize is going to have to be a must for this guy, for sure. He also has a right click going to be a shadow step where it uses one full unit of a three unit energy bar, energy meter, whatever you want to call it terminology wise. And you'll be able to use that to be untargetable while you dash forward for a certain duration. We'll talk more about its dragon stance uh, use when we get there. And then the F ability, the movement ability is agility. 50% faster and increased jump height for four seconds. It only consumes one unit of energy. So essentially, based on what my thinking would be, is that you're always going to want to be keeping the agility up as much as possible. You want that movement speed. The moment that you're sitting and kind of staying stagnant is the moment that you're going to get burned down. It's only got 1900 HP, so it's not exactly the beefiest of champions ever. And then the dragon stance, that's the cue. It switches over to your Hellcat claws. And while you're in that stance, this is important, you start to chip away your energy the entire time you're in it. Very interesting. And then interestingly enough, again, with that, is if you use your right click, the skewer, when you dash forward, it consumes all of your remaining energy. So it's best to use that when you're sitting at near the very, very end. It does have upward mobility so my thoughts would be you're diving in you're getting some damage done with your submachine guns you say gas pedal let's hit the dragon stance let's do as much damage as we can just before that energy meter runs out i would say try to wall climb and back the f up with your uh, skewer or use it to finalize a killing blow it does deal 600 damage to everybody that you pass through in your path so that's pretty huge as we take a look at oh sorry the uh legendary abilities you start off with Adrenaline Junkie at the first point. Dealing damage with submachine guns restores energy. Seems okay. Not so bad. Blood Reaper Skewer deals up to 400 bonus damage based on the amount of energy it consumed. I don't know. That sounds huge. That sounds huge. But it's only up to 400. And that's... So I'm going to assume that's max level 400. I don't know. We'll have to play around with that at some point. Master of Arms. Successful hits your submachine guns cost no ammo. What? Okay, we'll let you simmer on that. Dragon Fangs. Dragon Stance no longer consumes energy and instead consumes 200 health per second. Could you say VHS a little bit louder? I know I could. I think the best one's probably going to be Master of Arms just off the bat again. That with Cauterize. The synergy looks great. Let's build a loadout real quick like... Let's take a look here. Swift Hands, reduce the time to enter and exit Dragon Stance. I don't think you need that. While in Dragon Stance, generate six ammo per second. I don't think you need that. Uh, enemies hit by Claw Attacks receive 15% reduced healing for three seconds. Seems good. Gain 5% life stance, uh, life steal while in Dragon Stance. Maybe. We'll consider that one. Raw Talent, this is for the agility. Increase the speed boost of agility. Okay. Uh, gain increased jump height. We already have that. Gain four ammo. Eh, maybe. Heal 20 per second. That's effective HP. That sounds pretty good. Uh, let's go over to Shadow Step. Kills uh, with Skewer restore 10% energy. Okay. Kills with Skewer res uh, restore 200 health. Okay. Activating Shadow Step generates 8 ammo. That seems pretty good. Activating Shadow Step heals you for 60. That also seems good. Increase maximum HP. Uh, gain crowd control and slow reduction. This might be pretty big, actually, to be honest. 14% is a good base number. That's very possible. Uh, falling below 50% grants 10% energy. Eh, while firing SMG, increased healing uh, received by 10%. I think we're going to go with a little bit of that. And then we're going to go with a little bit of... We'll try this out. Enemies hit with claw attacks. Receive 15, 30, 45%. Seems like an okay number. 60% is pretty huge. Uh, we'll just go 35, 45 for now. Uh, heal... 
40 per second. How long is agility? We'll take a look at that in a minute here. Activating Shadow Step heals you for 120. It's 1,900, so three of those is 360. Good quick math. We'll go with level three. Eight ammo, 16 out of 70 maybe, and then 56, 70% crowd control and slow reduction. That seems pretty good, but you again, you already have... I don't know if I like this. I think we're going to go maximum HP, to be honest. Let's go up to 200 max HP. Let's do um, that. That's a 324. We'll try this out. It seems okay. Try it. Uh, how long did agility last for? Uh, four seconds. So you're looking at four seconds times 60. So you're only getting 240 health there uh, in total. And then afterwards, three times 180. That's uh, 360. So you're, it's, it's not bad. You're not getting, you're, it's not bad at all whatsoever. Uh, 360 plus another 180, it's, uh, what, four, uh, 540? It's not bad. Is that math even close to right? I don't even know. We already know this shift. 540, I was right. Okay, so 540, it's not bad. That's an okay, we'll start with that build. We'll see what happens. Let's get in the game, try them out, see what goes on. All right, we're back in it. We're gonna do the thing. We got the game going on. It only took us a million and a half tries at about 12 hours trying to get a decent game put together. Also due to server issues and whatever else, but I'm actually gonna go with something a little bit different. I'm gonna run the Adrenaline Junkie build here. I know I was just saying how good it sounded to have infinite ammo possibilities or routinely returning in uh, ammo, but at begin. the end of the day, I, I honestly think that it's gonna be, you want the resource meter, because that's essentially your Kronos, and the more that you can get it farmed up, the better. So we're gonna give the Adrenaline Junkie a go. Of course, we're gonna go Cauterize. We're gonna probably try to rush that at least a level two before we go into anything else. Uh, they do have a pretty solid team Five, comp. So do we, though. Four, We've got a decent team comp. Three, we don't have two, a lot of damage up front one. to help out. A lot of consistent damage besides begin. me. So I kind of have to be a little bit more careful with how I'm positioning myself. And honestly, I think I'm going to be using those uh, claws as a way to kind of poke at people a little bit more. They are ashes already. Well, that's never a good sign. Drawn first blood. There we go. There's that poke. Kill. Perfect. That's that poke we're looking for. That burst damage is really, really good. Killing spree. Perfect. Not sure why she was taking so long to get out of there, but we'll take the punish. An easy cleanup. Again, I think the burst damage that you're going to be seeing out of the claws is going to be one of the biggest keys to success. Of how do you use that? When do you use that? Can you use it properly? I think you're going to be using your agility mostly to maneuver and then boom, 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 and then get the heck out. Ooh, you got stuck. Good stick. We should have just hit our Q and then right click for the shadow step instead of trying to burst out. Yeah, got the stick on us. We'll put a lot of damage in again, so that's what's good news about that. 78% for the team. Gas pedal. Wow. Escort the payload. Let's do it. Enemies behind. Get out of the way. Okay. So there's enemies behind. I don't see anybody. You guys see anybody? Also, there is there is a range on the on the claws. Okay, so there is a range on it. Doesn't hit at a certain range. You can play from the bomb king. So for middle range, that's where you need to be living it out to get that early poke it. If you want to get the poke, you're gonna be sitting at mid range. Okay. I couldn't disc it. And there is a delay. So coming in and out of the claws, Killing same with the skewer, there's a little bit of a delay when it comes to being able to use another ability or start to fire up again. So that's what killed us right there. Kill. 
Going down the Makoa. Then get back out. In and out. Every good flanker should. Oh, we got the back line here. Okay, we're getting five figured out. I'm on the other side. Looks like the Makoa is trolling. So you see that kind of animation there. He spins his guns back, but then again, I had to reload as well. So you have to be kind of careful, I think, of when you're using that skewer to get in and out of fights, especially if you're going to use it to get into fights. Um, again, skewer does expend all of your resources. So the play might honestly be to use your Q, shadow, or not, sorry, pardon me, that's actually not correct at all. You shadow travel twice, hit your Q, hit your skewer and then hit your ultimate if you're looking to get into a backline spot for it we'll try it this next time Five, out we'll see how how four, that works out three two one the passive mobility with the wall climb it just he climbs so slow i'm not how i'm not sure how much value you're going to be getting out of it yeah, so he's going in for the mako we can first down that guy real quick So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta reload here. That's five in a row. Double kill. Okay, still, uh, the ultimate charge is actually pretty slow as well. Burn him down. The agility gives us the movement speed to move away from that. Seven in a row. A lot of headshots. Yeah, like right there again. It takes a while. Wow, that boop. It takes a while to use another ability. You can hear that sound effect going off. So you got to be a little bit careful about how you're utilizing that. It might be best to just use the shadow travel, the shadow steps to get in. Get back up your help on our teammate. Yeah, every time you switch stances, there's a little bit of a delay period. Is he off? He's off. Wow. Double kill. Savage. Yeah, this is a little bit of a farm fest. These guys aren't really giving us that hard of a time. Yeah, you can see it again there. But you can definitely see I'm starting to feel a lot more comfortable in the character the more I play it. You just kind of got to get used to a couple of the things. No. Right through. Again, we don't have any ammo. We got to be careful about how we're utilizing that. We got to we got to make sure we're going in, essentially. Victory. Um, diving in. There's still ammo left. I'm starting to find myself in the position that I'll use all my submachine go ammo, then hit Q. Not saying that's a bad thing, but I got to be careful about if I'm going to dive into that situation, I'm vulnerable for a while because I'll have no resources, no ammo. So it might be one of those things that I might be better off just utilizing all my uh, weaponry and then just using this skewer to back up. That was a really good play, by the way, from Promised One. So props if you're watching this. That's going to do it, though, for the this gameplay video for Koga. He's definitely fun. He's going to take a lot of play time. So... I'm not saying there is a right or a wrong way to play him as of yet, but you definitely need to kind of find a balance between when to go in, when to come out. If you can even go in at all, do you just sit back and poke with your team? There's going to be a lot of considerations. You're always going to have to be thinking not just about your own resources, but what does your team have to offer as far as numbers or positioning? How can you best flank or add more damage to the charts? So a lot of things to consider but that's been it for me on this one i'll catch you guys live this next week with the paladin summer finals so make sure you guys uh tune in then say hello to me it'd be nice to see you guys and until next time i hope that you keep holding it down